Hey everyone, Rick at Healing Field Farm here. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about how to run a profitable business um, and profitable farm. So for those that don't know, my background is retail business management um, over the last 25 years or so. So I do know what I'm talking about um, and I've broken this down into five subjects to how you can run a profitable farm um, or business. What I'm going to tell you, you may not like, some of, some of you may, but these are very simple, simple foundational rules to have a productive business. So I'm gonna go right down as quickly as I can for you guys. So the first one is you have to keep track of your expenses you have to keep track of everything, whether it be a bag of shavings, the cost of an animal, bag of grain, or even a little seed packet. Maybe you gotta go get some nails down at the hardware store. You have to keep track of everything. You cannot have a profitable business if you don't pay attention to what you're spending and what you're bringing in. It, it just doesn't work that way. So you have to know what you're spending keep track of everything start a spreadsheet get a notebook but keep track of every last penny okay the second part of that is you need to budget you cannot have a good business or a profitable business if you do not budget your expenses you need to know what that bag of grain is going to cost this week next week the week after and yes prices fluctuate so you need to give yourself a little leeway room give yourself an extra 20 30 dollars in that budget because if you're not budgeting your money and you do not know where it's going or you're just throwing an extra 300 dollars out there on something you saw online that you want to add to your farm but you don't really have the money for it well then come the next week when it's time to get your animal feed or get your shavings or get the hay well you spent that money last week and now you're in a bind so you have to budget okay and the last part of keeping track of your expenses you need to save your money you need to have some savings in case something goes wrong because it will cost you more money down the road so hypothetical situation you have a cow in a pen kick the gate open now it's in the neighbor's field eating your neighbor's crops well you don't have any money saved you can't buy a new gate you can't get the gate fixed and now after two days of your cow being in that neighbor's field he wants restitution for the damages your cow's done so now you need a new gate and you need to come up with a thousand dollars to pay that farmer so he doesn't take you to court whereas you ha if you had four or five hundred dollars in the savings you could have gone and bought yourself a hundred dollar gate or found somebody to weld said gate problem solved you have to have some savings to fall back on because if you're having a if you're owning a farm or any kind of business there will be setbacks and you will need some funding to keep things going smoothly it's very easy in a business especially a new business to fall back and get yourself in a hole and you want to avoid that you need to spend your money smartly you need to plan it out and you need to have some savings to fall back on in case something breaks and it could be as simple as you know maybe your watering system maybe you need a new hose you have to have the money to keep that stuff going. So I'm not saying you have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the bank right off, but you have to have something to work with, okay? So the second topic would be to know your community. You have to know who you're selling to. You have to know where to sell, okay? Maybe you can do a farm stand on your property. That's a great idea, but you're not gonna get rich off a of farm stand might make a couple hundred dollars a week you might make 30 okay if you want to sell stuff you have to have a better plan 
So you have to know where the farmer's markets are. Maybe you want to sell specifically to restaurants. Well, you need to go in and talk to those restaurants. You need to know what their needs are because you can't grow a bunch of lettuce thinking a restaurant will buy all your lettuce unless you've talked to them and know that they'll buy all your lettuce. Maybe they buy their lettuce from somewhere else, but maybe there's something else that you can offer them. Okay? You need to know what your customers want. The best way I can tell you to do that is go to a farmer's market, go to a grocery store, stand there and watch. Watch what they're putting in their carts or baskets. You know, watch what they're buying at the farmer's markets. You can grow goats and goat milk and chickens and vegetables all you want, but you have to fill a need and you have to meet the need of that community. So if you go to a farmer's market and there's been people there five years that sell consistently, they've made a name for themselves. You know, one of them selling goat milk, one of them selling vegetables, one of them selling meat. Well, if that was your plan to sell, you need to adjust that plan. You need to know what the community wants because those three niches, niches are already filled. So now you have to find your own niche. Okay. The third topic, you need to check out your competition. And this kind of goes back into knowing your community a little bit. You need to do your research. You need to know what farms are around you and what they're selling. So for instance, we have a meat goat operation down the road from us, probably five, 10 miles. And so I'm not gonna get in that business. They're, they've been around for years and years. They have a solid customer base. So I'm not gonna compete with someone who's already filling that need, okay? Check out the farmer's markets, check out the grocery stores, you know, T even talk to their uh, produce manager. Ask them what their best-selling items are. Ask them what items they wish they carried for the customers because that's where you're going to make your money. You have to fill a need. Check out their prices. You know, know what you're getting into. If you can grow vegetables all day long, but if you can't be competitive in your prices... You're not going to make any money. If you're spending $30 on building a raised bed and another $30 to fill it with dirt, well, now you're already $60 in the hole. You, and you have to sell, you know, tons and tons of vegetables out of that bed just to reach that $60. And then you have to make up for your time before you see a profit. So you need to know what the community wants. Again, and you need to know what your competition selling. Competition is a good thing, but if that market is full or flooded, you need to find another niche to be profitable, to be successful. <clears throat> you, the fourth topic is you have to have more than one source of income. You can't just say, I'm gonna put, a, put in a garden and I'm gonna make enough money to live. You will not you will drown in in debt you will you just will not okay you have to look at the bigger picture and say i'm going to grow these plants and then you're going to bring in these animals you know maybe it's chickens maybe nobody in your area sells meat chickens that's a great business Every, everybody eats chicken you know maybe there's no good supplier for chicks in your area other than male, you know, raise some chicks, make some money that way. People love baby chicks. They, they do. Um, maybe nobody has goat milk in your area. Maybe, you know, find what is missing in an area. But at the same time, you know, if you're going to have animals, have a plan to make a profit with them or use them. For what you need so for instance here we have a lot of tilling to do so we're going to let the goats and pigs do that work for us they're going to earn their worth and then you know down the road yeah we will end up butchering what we need um but the 
the goats, they can be multi-profitable. They can work in your garden, work on your grass. They can clean out areas of your farm and, and then produce milk for you and produce babies, which you can sell. So pigs, you can get pigs, you can raise pigs, breed pigs, sell the pig meat. You can, you can grow just about anything in a garden. You know, maybe you bring in some fruit trees, maybe farmer's markets that they're not selling a lot of fruit. Well, there, there's your niche. Get, get in some dwarf fruit trees, get some fruit in within a couple of years. Okay, you have to have more than one source. You don't go in a grocery store and all they sell is tomato sauce. That's just not how it works. They sell everything a person might need for groceries. And, and those are the are what you need to grow to achieve. You have to have more than one source of income and you have to have what the customers want. Okay, the last topic, you have to get your name out there. You're building a brand, you're building a business. We live in a world of social media, but with farming, there is a lot more face-to-face, -face, okay? I'm not saying social media is bad, it's a great thing if used correctly, and you can build a lot of following. This is you know, what we're doing between Facebook and YouTube, and we'll be doing Instagram, you know, and, and that's a good way to start and get your name out there, but no one's going to go to a farmer's market and buy your stuff if no one knows you. They know those other five people that have been doing this for five years, but they don't know you. So you have to get out there, you know, make some business cards, pass them out at the farmer's markets or fairs or trade shows. Get your name out there, make some t-shirts, let them know who you are, uh, you know, what your farm's about. You know, and just talk to people people aren't going to want to buy anything from you if you don't reach out and talk to them. They're, they're going to go to the, the guy next to you who's chit-chatty and talking and says, hey, you know, this is a great deal today. Look what we got out of the garden. Or, you know, maybe, you know, get in there, shake hands, talk to people. I know it's tough right now with the COVID thing, but this is how you run a business. It, it's people-based. And, uh, you know, that, that's the biggest fundam fundamental you can't have a business without people so you have to build that rapport with them okay so just a quick recap to be profitable track your expenses keep track of everything budget and save you need to know your community you need to know who you're selling to and where to sell you need to know your competition check them out do your research you have more than one source of income okay probably three or four to be honest and then get your name out there social media business cards you know join a local 4-h get get involved with your fairs if, if that's the kind of business you want you know get your name out there know the people get to know the people you're going to sell to so okay i hope this was helpful um, please subscribe right there in the corner or down below uh, give us a like please leave any comments questions we'll be glad to answer um, again, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Talk soon.